Now, if this goes off and Rumble shuts it down or the com camera shuts it down or whatever, you're going to have to just catch it a different way. You should have been here. <laughs> Last time I preached, I said there was a word from the Lord called the coming distinction. There's a coming distinction distinction and I thought Lord you give me these words I think I know what I mean and they mean and then I look them up and I find out that uh, it's not distraction it's distinction and it means there is a distinct difference two years ago he said there's a difference coming and an acceleration Difference is a way in which people and things are no longer the same. It's also distinguishing of members and branches or faiths in a family. There's a coming distinction. Well, this week, you got it. There's Christians, Jews, Muslims. There are pro-Palestinian and there's pro-Israel all over the world. In every nation, in every town, in every city, it's a line being drawn one or the other. Please be careful with all the propaganda out there. I deleted five news stations that I look at because they were pro-Palestinian, and they said, oh, well, for what happened. I just went delete, 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 delete. I know where I stand because I stand with the word of the Lord. Amen. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem and we bless Israel. And those that bless Israel, God will bless their lives. Amen. Bottom line, I don't care if you're my relative I don't care if you're my, my next door neighbor or if you're someone here that disagrees with me. I must follow what I believe God is telling me to do. There was a distinction made, and it couldn't be even more divided. There's a nation, there's colleges, there's towns, there's cities, and protesters have risen in different nations, and they've drawn a line. This is this, and this is this. I do know that in a coming war called Gog and Magog, no one will stand with Israel. But if there are believers still on this earth, there will be people that will pray and stand. If you'd stand with me this morning, I'd like you to read with me Psalms 91, you're yeah, like, please look at the screen. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be my shield and buckler. I will not be afraid for the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Thank you. The message this, this morning is called, Hide Me. You know, if I look back, I find that Elisha, he just went into ministry. He just chastised Jezebel. They killed a bunch of prophets. And God told him he had cursed them. He said to them, actually it wasn't a curse, but they took it as a curse. 
He said it's not going to rain on this land for three years. Not dew nor rain, except at my word. Now, Texas was awful dry this year for many months. There was a lot of places that were very dry and other places that were just soaking wet with floods. So the Lord said to him, get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. I always love that when God picks on the Jordan River. I'm going to hide you right there by this little brook called Cherith. God, you just made me a prophet to the nations, and now you're telling me I need to go hide? There are moments that God is going to hide you coming up. You will be hidden. I might not find you on Facebook, and you not, might not find me. You may not see me on Rumble. You might have to actually go to church physically in order to get the word of the Lord. Now, I'm going to tell you, after the brook dried up, God sent him to a widow and said, she'll feed you. Except when he arrived, there was no food in the house. Those of you that have a pantry, God will send people for you if you know how to cook, you might make a meal. Now, I know Ricky knows how to cook, okay? Um, I've been at her table, and she cooks for a big family anyway, so what's the difference cooking for two more people? <coughs> Some people say throw a little water in the soup. Um, but when you learn to cook big, most of you know when all of a sudden your children are gone, or you're left without a mate, you can't just cook for one anymore. It's impossible to cook for one. Even when the kids leave home, if you've had boys, you can't cook just for you and your husband. Um, it's impossible because your brain thinks in four-cup measurements, not one cup. And that's just how it goes. But if you ain't got nothing in your cupboard and it's just you and the prophet of God shows up and he said, could you fix me something to eat? I'm hungry. And you think, I only have enough just for my son and me and then we're planning on dying. I understand her. She said, oh, what's the use? Who, what's one, one more meal? Sure, I can fix you something. Not knowing what she did saved her life. Some of the things you're going to be doing now in these days ahead. We've been in this church nine years. From day one, God has required of us to preach sermons that were very difficult. Some people left because they said, we don't want to have to prepare our lives for nothing. And we don't like anything that gives us any caution or instruction that the days ahead might be rough. And I said, okay. We're just going to teach you what God tells us to teach you. Sometimes it was six months later what God gave came to pass. Sometimes two years later it came to pass. And not always did I like the word. There were times I had people call me and say, Pastor, you're wrong. I said, Shh, I'm not the one that said it. You can go talk to God about it. And sure enough, it came to pass. I'm like, how did you know that? Probably the, one of the most daunting words was, I will expose the sexual abuse, the pedophilia, and the trafficking what was going on, I will expose it in Business America and the, and the entertainment industry. And the people will be so grieved, but little to nothing will become of it. And I had people tell me, oh, no, 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 you got that one wrong. I said, blame that one on God. That's what he said. And... That's what came to pass. 
I remember the Lord saying to me, mobile homes will become a hot item. People will live in rural commit communities and they will buy small mobile homes. You know, those little portable ones. You can drive them back, your little campers. And rural America will have an address, a number at each location in the Woodland community. I thought that was false until, I didn't think it was false. I just knew it was strange because that wasn't how it was until now there's a grid map of every acre with a plot and an address. How was I supposed to know that? There are things that God has said. I know. Some things we did not know, and it was a joke when I said, buy your toilet paper. <laughs> and that was like two months before there was this run on toilet paper. That was not a prophetic unction from the Lord. That was a smart mouth from me. Okay? But when God does give you a word that there is a distinction of evil and righteousness, what side are you going to stand on? So the widow, she made the little cake for the prophet, and she was fed. She didn't know that in advance. She just knew. I'm still going to sow and I'm still going to give in times of want. I'm still going to tithe. I'm still going to give into people's lives in time of want. When I had nothing to give, I made a pie. When I had nothing to sow and there was no tithe because I didn't even get it in my hands it went to the bank, I made a loaf of bread. And I, can, I told you this, I can still distinctly remember the pastor saying, that's not tithe. I said, it most certainly is. That's my gift. That's my gift. I remember eating scone tithe. It was very delicious scone ties with buttercream or something in them, you know, a little raspberry glaze. And I went, I'm eating tithe scones. I love it. I determined I would never go to the house of God empty. Or if they were hungry, I would feed them. I don't dream weird dreams. But last night I dreamed. I was in the middle of a war, and I got handed two baby boys. One was very traumatized and would not speak. The other one talked fluently, in his jabber. You could hear it. And they were about mm, maybe nine, ten weeks old. One would not respond because of the trauma, and the other one would jabber. And they said, here, they don't have parents. And I thought, well, that's strange. So I woke up, and I still remembered that, and I said, Lord, I'm going to ponder that a bit. Because sometimes you're given something. It doesn't mean I'm prophesying I'm giving babies, being given babies. But sometimes you're being given something to care for. And you have a responsibility to save somebody's life. And Elijah knew I'm going to save this widow's life if she will listen to the word of the Lord. In Acts 12, Peter was in prison. But constant prayer, that means somebody is fasting and praying around the clock. There was a church that prayed continually for God to um, deliver him. And behold, the angel of the Lord stood by him in the middle of the night when the soldiers are sleeping. He's bound with two chains in between these soldiers. I'm serious, guys. What's the likelihood? 
that you're in prison and you're bound, you're bound with two chains between two soldiers and the guards before the door are keeping the prison. Does that look hopeless? And in walks the angel of the Lord and does this. Well, it doesn't say it does this, but shh. You know that look. Like, don't say nothing. I'm getting you out of here. The chains fell off his hands. The angel said, rise quickly. The angel said to him, gird yourself and tie on your sandals. You know what gird your loins are? Remember? That means pull your skirts up, tie them in a knot. We're going to walk quick, and we're getting out of here. Put on your sandals, tie them up, lace them. And he did. He said, put on your garment, follow me. This is scripture. This is Acts 12. And he went out, and he followed him, and did not know what was done by the, if the, what was being done, if this was real or if this was a dream. He thought maybe he was seeing a vision. That's what the scripture says. And when they passed the first set of guards, then they passed the second guard post. And they came to an iron gate that led to the city and, and which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out, went down the street, and immediately the angel departed him. Talk about God. He's standing in the middle of the street going, what just happened? You came and delivered me because some people were praying. Now, I have seen some mighty prayers lately. I heard them go forth on Wednesday. I saw the heart of the people here as they prayed for Israel, as they prayed for what was going on in these wars in the Middle East. Guys, this is just the beginning of what is going to happen. And the atrocities are horrific. You can't make up the photos. And I've seen many of the photos. You can't make these up. It is one thing to kill somebody. It's another thing to dissect them. When I look at war, war is ugly on both sides. But if we don't pray, if we don't pray for Jerusalem and for the peace of Jerusalem, when God says, I need you to pray, So I woke up this morning, and I heard the Lord say, some people will not fast or pray until they're pushed into a corner, and they have to, and it's their kids. It's their family that is held hostage. Then they won't be able to eat. They will fast, and they will pray. He said, Danielle, what will it take for you to fast, especially when you make homemade bread? Or you live with a baker close by. Or somebody puts in that pot roast and that smell of all those savory spices. A toothache, yes. Sometimes it helps to have jaw surgery, you know, you can't eat that. No. But what will it take for you to fast and pray? That's my question this morning from the Lord. See, you think he doesn't chastise me? He's just asking me, what's it going to take for you to fast? I nibble. I nibble all the time. I'm nibbling on something. What's it going to take for you to fast, Daniel? Uh. See, David was hidden in a cave. God hid Joseph in a prison. There's times coming up that are going to be 
bad enough even in America if we are still here and Jesus has not come where God is going to need to hide you. He's going to need to hide you. This is how I believe. Now, I went on YouTube, and you can go on there and Google it. It's called um, A Cloak of Invisibility, and you can see how they make them. What it is, it's a, a piece of thick um, plastic or a, a cape of material, and it has built into it sensors where the light changes it doesn't go just here the light goes around the back and only shows what's in back so you could be hidden in a field and sitting there and it would look just like the ground in back of you they would never see you and the lord said you're going to come to a place where you're going to teach the people i will hide them if I am truly their Abba and they are in prayer, they know the power of the blood of Jesus, which you know. You know the power in the name of Jesus, which you know. And the word is hidden deep in their heart. They'll be able to use those weapons and plead the blood, just like over the doorpost of the Israelites and the death angel flew over them. So I thought about that. I thought about the many people in Israel that don't have a clue of what happened and their authority in Jesus. They don't have a clue about the power of the blood of Jesus. You guys are not ignorant. You've never been. For nine years, we've preached the truth. You've applied it. Y'all have some sort of a pantry. You all have been aware that if the power grid goes down, you're going to have to get toasty warm. How are you going to do it? I've given you lots of ideas. You can always pick my brain. Um, I can tell you the power grid is at risk. There, like there's only that much more before it goes down, like an eighth of an inch. That, does that make sense to you? That's what they're saying that all of America is at the highest risk, risk they've ever been. And I said to myself, thank you, God, for your word. We did not raise weenies. You have applied the word of the Lord, and you've sought his own wisdom for your own lives and your families. And we have preached it for years. So you're not simpletons. This is not news to you. It's just now it's more of a reality that there is a distinction coming between the Christian and those that follow other gods. Those that will stand with truth, uh, there'll be the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that say, you can put us in the fire. We're not budging. Though they be the Daniels that they say, you need to stop praying. And three times a day, Daniel goes, Opens the window. This is what I like about Daniel. Not once did he say, let me pull the curtains while I pray. He actually opened the window. He wanted to make sure they heard him pray. Make sure they saw him stand in prayer. He didn't, he didn't even begin to disclose it. And um, I mean to cover it up. This is who I am. And this is who we are. Wow. I kind of look at that and I think to myself, God hid Joseph in prison before he came to the palace. He hid Moses in the desert for one third of his life before he led the people out of Egypt. God hid David in mountainous cave caves running for his life before he came into the palace and if you've ever had to run and hide not fun not fun to be in fear of your lives i know 
there are people that have been trafficked, women, young boys, and I've known that they've had to run and hide for their lives. I can remember somebody that we hid. Yes, you could say I'm a little conspiracy theory, although I just found out it's right. So they're going to tell you, you know, aluminum foil is hard, is dangerous for you to have and to cook with or to, to purchase. And so they're going to make it expensive. That's what they said. It's true that if you take your cell phone um, and you wrap it in tin foil, uh, like 10 layers, it works um, equal to a verde, uh, verde cage. Verde cage. Yeah, so it the signal does not penetrate it. That's why they tell you to stick it in the microwave, okay? Now, the day may come you might not have a cell phone. You might have to get rid of a cell phone because it traffics everything you do. It records you. It doesn't like me right now. I have an old phone. And I would say it's a, a 7, a Samsung 7. That probably just turned off, huh? It's okay. That's okay. It's you. So I look at it like this. Yeah, th it's been doing that so much lately. Anybody that thinks they're going to catch the Sunday morning service or the Wednesday service, it's just not going to happen. If you're not here, you ain't getting it. So um, a little bit until 48 minutes in it, but you probably never heard the prayer going forth for, for another 45 minutes. See, I didn't want it unless the prayer was going forth. But when you look at this and you look at the provision of God and what he has done, if he's going to do it for a widow, he'll do it for you. What's the likelihood that you know your Abba Father is your provision and you completely surrendered your life and trust him that he is going to ignore you when you say, Abba, I have a need. This is my need. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I remind God of that. When we pray for you and we do pray for you, I remind God all the time, God, so-and-so needs a job. Father, you said, and then you quote what he says. Father, so-and-so needs protection. I ask that your blood would cover them and protect them. Father, so-and-so needs healing. You are the great healer. And Father, I'm believing for healing. And that's how we pray. That's my trust. So in the middle of everything going on across the world, God has reminded me, when are you going to fast? When are you going to pray? When it comes to your doorstep? No, Lord. Are you going to fast before that and pray? Yeah, Lord. Wow. I love Peter, how he escapes. I love that God hid Paul for three years in Arabia after his conversion before he became a missionary and taught him some things. Before that, he probably would have been killed. That would have been my guess because he was a persecutor of the church. And then God hides Elijah right beside the brook and feeds him supernaturally. You might get to that point. I don't know what's coming down in America. I'm believing in the coming of the Lord. And I will continue to believe in the coming of the Lord. Anybody that tells me anything different, not listening, you could call me old-fashioned. I am. Luke 4 through 8. So all those in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath, and they rose up, and they thrust Jesus out of the city. And they led him to the brow of a cliff in which the city was built, that they could throw him over the cliff. And then he passed through the midst of them. That means he was hidden from them. Psalms 27 5 says for in the time of trouble he will hide me in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me he shall set me upon a rock 
You know the song. Rock of ages, clap for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Uh, that's me. Do you know why almost every scripture on hiding, God hiding you, comes out of Psalms? Because King David was always running for his life. And God was always having to save him. God was always having to protect him. I tried to count up the times God has protected my life. I tried to count the times he saved us. And the things I can't see is when a car was nudged out of my way because an angel said, move over. The things I can't see is the icy roads as you begin to slide and you got an angel on your bumper who skids, skids it, you know, just puts his feet down and slows it down. The things I can't see, well, Matt and Jassa did, is when their truck flips with big butcher knives that they were carving pumpkins with, and they were in the back seat, and they start flying through the air. And when they land, God preserved you. And they're all around you. The things I were not, I was not there when three lights came into your room and you knew, you knew that relatives had come to receive you into heaven and you were going to die. And then they passed right through. I wonder who was praying that night. That prayed them right on out. Nope, nope, can't manifest and and walk Marie on over. Nope, she's meant to live. Amen. She's meant to live. How many times that God saved your life supernaturally and you didn't really realize it? Or you realized it, but nobody was there to visualize it. They all think you're kind of nuts. Yeah, really, that happened to you, Pastor Danielle? Uh-huh. But in his time of trouble, he will hide me in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle. He's going to hide me. Psalm 17, 8. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your rings. Isaiah 49, 2. And he has made my mouth like a sharp sword. When you speak his word, it goes forth. In the shadow of his hand, he has hidden me. He made me a polished shaft in his quiver. He's hidden me. And then the wicked king of Judah, Jehoiakim, burned the scroll of God's word in Jeremiah. It was given to him. And then commanded the king's sons to seize Barak, the scribe, and Jeremiah, the prophet, so they could be killed. It says, but the Lord hid him. Now, maybe you could say I'm a bit, a bit, a bit presumptuous, but I believe that God is going to hide you guys. That those of you that know the word are going to be hidden. So this is how I pray over Jordan Rivers. Father, hide Jordan Rivers Church and cause it to become invisible to anyone that would mean to do it harm or its people. Put the angels of God around it. Shoulder to shoulder, supernaturally, even on the roof and on the vehicles, and protect it and keep it. And do that with my house. Cause anyone that would mean our family harm, cause us to become invisible and hidden in you. See, the scripture says when you gave your life to Jesus, you were already hidden in Christ. You're going to have to take some things very literally. If a scripture says it, you're going to need, you're going to need to take it literally. Your, your life, you're dead, by the way. It no longer exists. You've died with Christ. You've died with Christ. You've risen with him. You're hidden in him. So if you're going to be hidden in him, I take that literally, that there's a cloak of invisibility, invisibility 
to the enemy. And he can look and he can stare and say, where'd she go? I can hear the praises, but I have no idea where they're at. Uh, that's just how I'm believing. Psalms 32, 7, you are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with songs of deliverance. 119 verse 114 you're my hiding place and my shield i hope in your word psalm 61 3 for you have sh uh, been a shelter for me a strong tower from the enemy everywhere i look out of every scripture that talks about god hiding you it has to be king david he's always in trouble he's always fleeing his enemy but he knew his god you're going to need to start to quote the word of the Lord. Father, I thank you. Today you hide me under your wings. I'm sheltered under your provision. You keep me in all things. You declare the word of the Lord over your life. I know Julie has a book out there called Declarations and Prayers. Um, I think it's a little $10 book. Understand what you declare is who you become. What I didn't hear, I did hear this a little bit from King David. Oh, God, my enemies, the enemies are after me. God, they're looking to slay me. But you, O oh Lord, are a shield for me, and you will keep me. That was King David. Some people thought he was bipolar. He wasn't. He was human. But he knew a keeping God. You guys need to know, I believe God to keep you all the way home. Amen. Whether he comes next week or he comes next autumn or in the middle of summer, he surely will send Jesus to catch you away. Now, when you grow up old school, you do things, your dads do things, you know. My dad would play hide and seek with us at night because we didn't have a TV set. So it was popcorn, books, a game, hide and seek, whatever. My sister Cindy was small enough. Um, my dad would be in the kitchen doing dishes with my mom. This is how what I remember. He's drying some dishes, and we're playing hide and seek, and we cannot find my sister. And she is hidden so well by my dad and she was like stealth you know she was very quiet you couldn't um you wouldn't know she was there we have a, a little girl in our church that can hide under a blanket flat in a bed you can't find her we've known that kids have slid between the walls in a bed and been hidden to the point the police were called because they thought the child was missing. I know that we, you know, there was a little short time ago that Nick and I were babysitting. And the Lord reminded me I need to put the top lock on the door, but, you know, this child was just playing on the ground in front of me. And my, I dozed. I went. And all of a sudden, the room became very silent. Up till then, somebody was jibber-jabbing. So silent that Nick sat up, because he was taking a cat nap. And he said, where's Dasa? And we jumped up. I screamed and yelled through the house, you know, like, hey, calling her name. and Chasing all through the house, and she's not there. So I go out on our property, which is 20 acres, and the road is there, and there's ponds and marsh and, uh, you know, paths, and I can't find this child. And it was probably I yelled for three or four minutes. I'm about ready to call in a posse. I'm about ready to call 911. I'm about ready to call in a search party. And I'm screaming. I'm yelling. I'm frantic. 
because all I did was close my eye for one second. And I'm yelling pretty loud. And I said, answer me right now. And I hear this. I'm over here. <laughs> I said, you get your little fanny right over here right now. And down the dirt hill, there's a pile of dirt. In back of the house comes this little mud ball. says, here I am. Those are the moments you don't know if you want to swat them or hug them. I know this one thing. You thank them for answering and you hug them. Because if you swat them after they answer, they ain't going to answer next time. So I give lots of praise. Thank you. I was worried, blah, blah, blah. But if you've ever been there with a child that's hiding so well, and I can remember, we went through the whole house, my sister, you could not see her. But my dad in the kitchen had had two long kitchen uh, cupboards, you know, the, yeah. So here they were, and he opened them both. And standing in back, and he had thrown the dish towel up. Standing in back was my little sister. Not a word. The entire time we were searching. She stood behind those cupboard doors while he's drying dishes. And you would never have known. That's how I believe that God will hide you. Your father will hide you. And no one will ever find you when he hides you. During times of World War II, a submarine which arrived with soldiers was uh, distance from the troop. And the soldiers were kind of on their own. They managed to get down and reach a forest. One of the soldiers departed from the group, and he was left unable to contact his teammates. So he was stuck in a dense jungle while being followed by the enemy. And he knew... He had to hide from his enemy. He searched for places to hide. <coughs> in one mountain, he found a place full of caves, and he chose one of the caves, and he hid himself there. He sat inside the cave, and he prayed, and he said, God, if you will save me, I don't want to die. If it be your will, please save my life. I believe in you. Anyway, no matter what you do, and I will love you forever. And no sooner were the tramping of the enemy's soldiers' sound started echoing through the forest. The noise was created by the dry branches on the path. It indicated the enemy was approaching. He said, well, I guess I'll be caught. But while he was waiting, he saw something catch his sight. It was a spider. It was a big spider. It was trying to build its home inside the cave. Yet it was building and spinning very fast. I assumed God would build a wall of bricks around me and save me, but instead he's using a spider web in front of me. And I'm thinking, this is interesting. As time passed, the enemy seemed to be approaching over a few hours he tried to peek outside, and he saw they were checking all the caves. Footsteps came close to the beginning of the cave. He prepared himself for capture. The soldier stood outside, looking inside this cave, and he knew he would be arrested from this guy that was staring and looking inside the cave. And he prepared himself. He said, why isn't he coming in this cave? Then he remembered the spider's web. The soldier said, there's no one here, or they would have broken through the spider web. Nobody in this cave. Sometimes God will use the littlest thing to hide you. And it could be 
at a sink in back of a cupboard door with a dish towel thrown up. You're going to have to learn to trust God like you've never trusted him before. And you're going to need to learn to say to the Father, Father, I have this bill due, and I don't know how this is going to happen. But I know that you, you're my God, and I simply trust you. You're going to need to know how to trust God with your kids when you can't be with them and there's no cell phone for you to call them. And they're a long way away and you can't talk to them. And you're going to need to trust God with your loved one that has gone on before. And understand, you can't talk to them right now. But you know where they're at. And they're in his presence. You're going to need to know how to fast. You're going to need to know how to pray. And I would suggest we begin to do it sooner than later. I don't know what's coming down the line this week for Israel. The weather delayed them going in with ground forces into Gaza. Do you think it might have been a spider web? <laughs> what's the delay? Why is the timing of the Lord so critical in our lives? Why is it so important that when you rise in the morning, you pray, and when you lay your head at night, you pray? And if you fall asleep while you're praying, then you need to sit up until you get it done. Why is it so important that the grandmas and the grandpas and the moms and the dads begin to pray fervently? Because there's a distinction Israel and America. America is entering into this battle with Israel. Which means many nations, many people have crossed into our borders, 7.1 million from foreign lands, designated waiting. Most of them are all men. Many of them have military backgrounds. And I don't know what they're waiting for, but I'm going to tell you, if a spider web can protect a soldier, and I have on the armor of God, and I have the word of the God in my mouth, and I'm not afraid to speak it, and I have the blood of Jesus over my household, and I know the authority in his name, and I know the scriptures, no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. I know the scriptures. Behold, I've given you authority to tread on any serpent, scorpions, over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall of any means harm you. I know the word of the Lord that says that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High is going to abide under his shadow. Okay, God. I'm standing with your word. I'm going to confess your word. I'm going to use your word. I'm going to use your name. I'm going to apply the blood of Jesus. I'm going to pray. As if my life depends on it. And it does. And I'm standing with you. I cannot urge you enough to understand that what is coming could put you in darkness. So lights go off, light a candle. There will be provision in your house. You widows, God sent an Elijah to one of those. Stay with the word. You moms and pops, stand with the word. Don't back down for one minute and let one of your kids go. Well, that one, uh, Father, I don't know how you're going to deal with that kid. Do not curse your children. With, oh, God, they're beyond help. Uh-uh. No. If a God can part the Red Sea and deliver you. You know, that was something Chelsea would always tell me. When Chelsea hid at our house. Pastor Daniel, if God can part the Red Sea 
and bring deliverance to all those Israelites, then he can do it for me. And now look. And now look. God, if he can, if he can save Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, if he can save Moses and the bull rush, rushes, he can save my little boy. That's how I want you to begin to talk. God, if you can do it for here, you can do it for me, and I'm going to simply believe you all the way to the end. I'm not going to waver. I'm not going to look at one of my kids and say they're beyond saving, beyond help. I'm not going to look at the circumstance and say, Lord, looks like we'll all starve to death. First of all, I have two or three extra hips. <clears throat> I won't be starving to death. But none of my family will be either. There will be provision in my house. There'll be protection in my house. Now, I don't have a gun. I don't pack. Now, there's security that packs, and, you know, and I have relatives that pack, and I have sons that pack. I have some daughters that pack. I don't pack because the Lord told me, you're going to use the authority in my name. You're going to look at it. You're going to say, "By the, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke that. And you're going to go after what you see in my name, and I'll perform it. I'll stand behind my word. It will not return void. So you little old ladies, they ain't got no nine mil. And you wouldn't know how to shoot it if it was. Nick did make me target practice one time. And he said, oh, that's not good. That is not good because I couldn't hold the gun up and it always went right down into the groin and blew, blew holes right through the little figures. He said, mm, 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 sucks to be them. <laughs> I said, honey, I can't shoot. I just, it's just not there. I just, that kickback is too much. I can't do that. I'm going to have to use the word. I'm going to have to use a higher authority than a different weapon. Amen. But if you don't know your weapon, I gave you a hundred scriptures. It's pretty sad when a seven-year-old underlines every one of those scriptures in his Bible. Did you underline yours? He's seven. Eight, excuse me, eight. Underlines them. Because he wanted to know those were the important ones. Pastor Daniel said those are important. Beef it up. Get your armor on, sleep in it. Lace up your boots. Monica once had a dream. Sorry, Monica, I'm picking on you. In the dream, floodwaters were coming in so fast around her. She was trying to get herself and her family up to a higher ground of safety in the house, stepping on furniture. God's going to move you up. He's going to need you to move up and take some things seriously because there's some floodwaters coming. I can't be here to protect you, but within you lies a force mightier than all the forces in this earth. And that is a living God who you have been hidden away with. That is the word of God which inhabits you. That is the name of Jesus which you've known the authority of and that's the power of the blood of Jesus that we don't minimize I don't know what this week holds. I know we have ships in the Mediterranean. I also know they were talking about some troops on the ground from the United States. I know there's been threats from Turkey. 
Egypt, Iran, Russia, even China said, call it quits. I know the United States is a target. But I also know there are people praying. And prayer changes things. And I know that people aren't backing down in prayer. And because of that, because of that, do you know what the restrainer is? He who restrains. It's those little people down there in Jordan Rivers Church and across America that won't stop praying. And God says, I'm just going to have to send some angels, some extra ones. I'm going to have to do some extra things because there's some people not letting go. And they're pleading the blood, and they're pleading the blood, and they're pleading the blood. Now, some of you, I have 30 of you or so, that are prayer ministers. Some of you pray pretty fervently, off and on all day. It's because you're bored, and you have nothing else to do, right? No. It's because you don't have a, maybe a whole lot of distraction. And God has positioned you for some quiet time in your house. And you take him seriously. And, and every time one of those names come before, you begin to intercede for him. It's not mere coincidence when I stand before God that I won't be at the top of the list as the best prayer warrior in the church. I pray. I will pray in the Holy Ghost, too. But then there's times I get phone calls and interruptions and I have to go do things. And somebody else across the way spiritually is on their knees. And that's what I'm trusting in, that somebody is backing me up. Somebody's got my back. Somebody else is standing shoulder to shoulder with me, and it ain't just me. The pastor Jasta would come here. Come here. It ain't just her. Kim and Dave, if you'd come here, come stand up for me. Marie. You take a different stand in ministry. Alana, come here. Matt, if you'd come stand with Jasta. Billy Joe, come stand up here. Sherry, come stand up here. Carl and Cindy, come stand up here. Do you realize I could call on every person in the entire church? Do you understand? Do you understand? Marge, come stand up here. Betty, come stand up here. Henry, come stand up here. Aaron, come stand up here. Monica, come stand up here. I need you to stand to your feet, Dave. Come stand up here. Tom, come stand up here. I want to know who's praying. Who is praying in this building? I need you to stand to your feet this morning. And I need you to come stand up here. And the reason I need you to come stand up here, I need you to understand I'm not standing alone. Susie, Holla, Lolly, Pete and Nancy and Sharon and Benjamin, Michael, praise. He's like, oh, she, I can't stand because I know she's going to pull that song out from, you know, make you do. Yes, I do. I want you that. You are my hiding place. I think it's Selah. Selah. Come over here. Come stand with these people. Now, I'm going to preach from this corner, okay? I'm back here. I need you to look, Monisa and Mary Mary and James. You know, Amy's at the camera. I don't stand here alone. I stand here with the body of Christ. Every one of you, I count on your prayers. I count on you to grow up and get in the word 
and get hungry for it. I count on you to be as an eight-year-old little boy. Pull out your scriptures that you were given and underline them in your Bible and find them and know, I need to put that in my heart. I am not standing here by myself. I counted we have maybe 70 people in our congregation. I'm standing with all 70. And they're all going to pray. They're all going to take some time, even if they fast one meal, and pray. They're all going to get in the word even deeper. They're all going to grow deeper. They're all going to love deeper. They're all going to minister deeper. Not one of them are going to be lost. There's a blood covering over you guys. And I'm not removing it. And as your pastor, I plead the blood of Jesus on all your lives. And I take it very serious that when we stand together, Jess is my associate pastor. Somebody goes, what about Nick? Ah, he's the executive pastor. Oh, no, you got to be a man. I said, I'm not, not cutting off my breasts and transitioning, so you'll accept me as pastor. I, God does not see my gender, but he does see my heart. And we're going to do what we need to do all the way through, no matter if the lights go out or the lights don't go out, no matter if I have a cell phone or I don't have a cell phone. I'll be here. And I ain't budging. And I'm believing God for your lives. I just want you to lift your hands with me. Just close your eyes for a moment. God, you see us. We are a body of believers that have been raised to be strong warriors. We will not move. We will not budge. We will not bend. We will not bow before the enemy. We believe all the way through you will hide us. You will keep us. We will be a provision to other people. We will be a sanctuary of worship. Your provision will be in the house and over our lives. The angels of the God, the angels of the Lord surround us wherever we go. Mighty warring angels. And they keep us. Your word is implanted in our hearts that we would not sin against you. And I thank you, God. Together we stand, believing you all the way. In Jesus' name. In the name of Yeshua. Thank you, Jesus. All right. I'm going to let you just go back to your seats for half a moment. Michael, will you put on that song? I just want you to sing this with me.